radon gas makes up a very tiny amount of gas in our atmosphere. It's a noble gas like helium, meaning it's odourless, colourless, tasteless and non-flammable. As a general rule, it doesn't react or interact with the other elements. The difference is that radon is a very heavy gas and is dangerous because of its radioactivity. A radon can occur naturally or by human use of radioactive materials. Some rocks such as phosphates, granites and shales and others contain uranium which is radioactive and when uranium-238 decays it produces radium-226 and when it decays it produces the radon gas. The problem is that these isotopes have a half-life of 4.5 billion years and 1,600 years respectively. So it continue to produce radon for a very long time. But radon-222 has a half-life of less than four days, so it rapidly produce radiation once it in turn has been produced. But the problem doesn't stop there, in that the radioactive decay of radon is only part of the sequence, and the elements produced by radon's own decay themselves radioactive and have even shorter half-lives, this time being measured in minutes, and these are solids rather than a gas. So what does this mean for humans who come into contact with radon? Well, walking about a normal activity, there isn't really a problem, as this makes up what's generally known as background radiation. In areas where the types of rocks that produce this radiation are present, you may get double the normal level, but this still doesn't represent that much of a hazard, as the levels is still very low. The problem comes with our buildings. When radon gas emerges from the rocks and soil around buildings, and because it's generally ten times heavier than the other gases in our atmosphere, it can be trapped in the buildings, especially in basement areas. And once in the buildings, the concentration of radon and related radiation can then build up to a dangerous level. Normally, the type of radiation that radon gives off wouldn't be particularly dangerous as it can't penetrate that far. However, since the gas can be inhaled into the lungs where it decays, both it and the atoms it decays into can produce radiation that can damage the delicate, vulnerable surfaces of our lungs. This is a considerable risk to the general population. However, the people at very high risk are those who already have significant damage to their lungs, most notably heavy smokers. There's an issue also with detection. The presence of radon gas is rather difficult to identify, especially as one area may be clear of radon, but in another nearby room may have dangerous levels, and that levels may rise and fall over time. Ventilation can help disperse the radon gas, and also push the gas into a particular part of the building, creating a dangerous concentration of the gas. The other area for risk in radon is quarries, where the extraction of granite and other rocks may also re release significant quantities of radon gas. Therefore, people working in these quarries need to monitor their radiation status. So we have radon, very unusual and sometimes quite dangerous gas. Yes.